So for today's video, we've got something really special. We've got a dry aged brisket point that we're gonna make something really special with. Hi, welcome along to Barbecue Life, the only YouTube channel dedicated to the Audi Camaro. As I said before, we've got a beautiful dry age brisket point and we're gonna be making some burnt ends with that. But we're also gonna be reserving half of our brisket point Fat pack it, stick it in the freezer so that we've got another cook that I'm going to have coming up for you in the next few weeks as well. So on with these burnt ends. So first of all, I will need to show you this brisket. So I picked this up from McNaid down in Faversham. So the butcher there is called Simon. I met him at Sizzle Fest last year and we got on really well. I've been chatting to him on social media and I said to him about, are you able to source me some really nice brisket? And he said, yes, most definitely. So I went down there um, yesterday before this cook and he let me go out into the fridge out the back and have a look through the meat. He'd got five different lots of brisket hanging up there from different cows and different farms. So I've got to pick which one I wanted and then tell him how much I wanted cut of each one. So I've got a point and I've got a flat. So you've got an extra flat video coming as well at some point soon. And it is just absolutely fantastic it's been hanging in that fridge for five weeks dry aging and it is just an immense piece of meat so the farmer was called sam newington and it's from linden book farm it's angus beef it's been 100 percent pasture fed so it's not grain fed so it is going to be a slightly different cook to your full pack of biscuit briskets that you see on youtube because this is english beef from sus from east sussex and it's pasture fed, not grain fed. So you get a different amount of fat content in there. But we're gonna talk through as we're doing this video. But as a, I'm just over the moon with how beautiful this piece of meat is. So first things first, because it's dry aged, we need to skim the very outside off of the fat and off of the meat. Because it's hung for that time, you do get a bit of mold on there and it does dry out. But this is what gives the beef such a beautiful flavour. You just don't want to be eating it itself. It can be quite tough because the, the air's got to it and it gets like a, a pectile on there. Like when you cure um, bacon and you cure like smoked salmon, it's just like that. So we just need to trim that off. So you just want to take a very sharp knife and take as little amount off the outside as possible. If you've got some mould that's got it in a little bit deeper, then you do need to get in a little bit deeper with the knife. But you just want to be taking that very, very outside off first. After we've done that, we've put them pieces in a bowl, and now we want to give it a trim. So I just trimmed all the hard fat away, put that into another bowl, and that is going to go into a freezer bag and into the freezer, because that is going to make wicked extra fat for adding to smash burgers and things like that which again is another video we're going to do later on into the summer so we've got everything trimmed i want to show you around this brisket as you can see there's not a massive amount of fat in there but it doesn't mean that it's not going to be a fantastic piece of meat so because this is pasture fed and not grain fed it doesn't lend itself to a low and slow cook this is a hot and fast brisket like what i did with the sainsbury's one last year so you want to be cooking about 140 to 150 degrees C and it's going to take less time if you did a low and slow you're going to render too much of the fat out and you're going to end up with a drier brisket that's why we do a hot and fast cook so now we need to get it seasoned so I'm going to go on with some Worcester sauce so this is my always my go-to binder for beef if you just want to get that covered all the way over a fair few glugs over top bottom and the ends and then my rub of choices today is the Rusty Barbecue Company's Cattle Dust. So the reason that I'm using this is because it's a beautiful rub to go with beef anyway. But I want something pretty neutral because I don't want to be putting too many barbecue flavours on there. Because when I chop this in half later on and store half for later, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to be doing with that half. So I want neutral flavours on there. Because if I want to put it into sort of a shepherd's pie or maybe some Cornish style pasties or things like that, I don't want too much with the barbecue flavour on there. I just want some real nice umami flavours and the smoke. So we've got that covered. As you can see, that's looking really nice on there. We want to get that in the fridge for at least an hour 
a couple of hours overnight if you really want to once you've let it rest in the fridge and you've really let the any moisture that is left in there which there isn't a lot because it's dry aged come out and the rub really settle in then it's time to light up your Kamado so we need to set up for an indirect cook today so I've already got the charcoal lit we're going to get our deflector plate in there um, and let that start coming up to temperature as well and we're going to dial in them temperatures for 150 degrees C so that's generally about a finger's width on the bottom and half open at the top and I'm using Kamado King's Texas Club charcoal today so once we've got that all settled down um, we need to go on if you want to add any smoking wood now is the time so if you want a really deep uh, smoke ring then cherry is ideal so I've only got cherry chips so I decided to make myself up a little uh, foil pouch and put cherry chips in there and then I've got some whiskey uh, barrel chips as well so I mixed them in there together made a little pouch made the holes in there and then that will just sit on top of the coals and smolder away and give us a longer smoke on them than it would if we was just to put on the chips directly onto the charcoal they would burn away very quickly by putting them in a pouch they burn away a lot slower so we're going to get that into place underneath the deflector plate and we're going to get our brisket on. So we want to sit it pretty central directly over that deflector plate. Now my plan is to just shut this lid and I'm going to leave it for three hours. So I'm not going to touch it. We're going to do no spritzing. We're going to do no checking. We're just going to leave it for the three hours. And after that three hours, my real hope is that we're going to have a beautiful bark on the outside and then we can take the cook onto the next stage. So three hours in, let's open the lid and as you can see, the bark is set really nice on there. It smells unbelievably good. Like no beef I've ever smelt before. This is the first time I've ever had dry aged and it is just absolutely unbelievable. So we're gonna take this off, get it onto a chopping board and as I said, I wanna chop this in half straight away. So I did check the internal temperature just to see where it's at and it's sitting at 76 degrees C and it already feels relatively tender across the top. The very bottom is a little bit um, less tender but it's surprisingly tender and apparently this is the case with dry aged beef. It does tender up at a lower temperature than what um, non dry aged beef does. So I was quite um, impressed to see that 74 that it was not super tender it's not done tender, but it's much more tender than what a standard brisket would be at 74 degrees. So we've got it on the chopping board, chop it in half. As you can see, it is beautifully juicy through the middle. You can see that nice band of fat through the middle that is really starting to break down. So we're going to take half, pop that onto a plate, get that out of the way. And then the half we've got, we want to chop it up into, I like inch and a half cubes for point burnt ends. I don't want anything too small. So we're going to get that chopped up and really nice chunky pieces because they are still going to shrink a little bit bit but dry aged stuff doesn't tend to shrink too much at all because it's done its shrinking while it's been hanging for that five weeks so we've got it chopped up now we need to get an aluminium pan you could do this in a paella pan like we've got behind me but i like to use an aluminium pan because you do get so many bits stuck to it it's a real pain in the ass to keep that paella pan clean with the aluminium pan you can just bin them off so there is a link for those in the description below it is an amazon affiliate link along with all of the other amazon links in the bottom and that does help fund the channel um, without any extra cost to you guys so into this aluminium pan we want to go in firstly with about 150 mil of beef stock so i've just used one stock cube I only topped it out to 150 mil so it's quite strong in what we're doing get that in then we want to go in with some barbecue sauce so i'm just using a spicy and a sweet barbecue sauce from the supermarkets there's no particular brand here i think one was from um aldi's and the other one is um just from asda's the two that i like and they work together really well so we're just going to get them in to there as well and then we want to go in with some butter so of course i'm using mousse maple butter because that gives such a beautiful sweet flavor if you haven't got moose maple butter then you can add standard butter and then add a bit of brown sugar just to sweeten things up as well and then i like to add just a little splash of orange juice and a little splash of worcester sauce just into this sauce give it a nice mix up so that it's all mixed together get these brisket 
chunks back in. And then cover it with foil, leaving a little gap at the end. So this is going to let the steam escape. So you're still going to build a steam up in there, which is going to help tenderize this beef. But it's going to let the steam escape so that everything's going to melt down and just become thicker in the bottom. And then we're going to get a nice um, glaze across these burnt ends as it cooks down. So we're going to pop it back on. And every half an hour, I just want to give it a turn. But I'm expecting this to take about another two hours to really tender up, let all of that moisture come out of that juice that we've got in the bottom and really concentrate down and help flavour this meat. So as I say, every half an hour, we're just going to turn it. And after two hours, we're going to go in and just test for tenderness. And as you can see, it's nice and tender. There's a few pieces that are more tender than others. And as I say, I think that's just the bottom of that point that is not got a massive amount of fat in there. And it's harder to get as tender as the top half. So we've not quite got an, as much of a glaze on the top as I was have wanted. So I've just got them two bottles of barbecue sauce again. And we're just going to squirt a little piece of that across the top, toss them through and stick them back in uncovered for another 15 minutes. And that is going to set that barbecue sauce on there and give us a beautiful burnt end. So after that 15 minutes, as you can see, everything's tacked up and it's looking really nice. And it's time to take it off and give it a taste. So the colour on these are fantastic. Nice spongy texture, just what you need it to be. So you've still got a really nice chewy bark on the outside, but nice and soft in the middle and a beautiful barbecue flavour. Exactly what you want out of a brisket burnt end. So if you like what we're doing here at Barbecue Life, then please do subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the video, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.